So I'm sitting down here in one of the shadiest areas of our property with all of the birds singing in the background. And today I wanted to talk about how I transformed this area from what it was before, which was a huge mess, into what it is now. And then also talk about some tips on shady areas of lawns, what to think about with those, and what to think about in terms of grass types so that you can have some success with that. First of all, we always have to touch on cool season versus warm season grasses. I'm gonna be talking mostly today about cool season grasses because this is what we have here in the northern part of the country and I'm going to be giving you some examples of what I did down here. Now if you are in the south and you have warm season grasses a lot of people struggle with shade down there too because maybe you have Bermuda grass in a part of your yard or something but it does not do well in shade so if you had a section like this a very shady backyard you would have to think about doing something different there and I think that's where a lot of confusion comes in for people so if you are in the south and you're looking at some shade options you're going to be probably thinking about some types of St. Augustine some types of zoysia and maybe centipede can handle a little bit of shade too but if you are in those sections I don't really have any examples to show you today because I don't have those grass types so do some looking in your area in terms of what is shade tolerant for those grasses that I just mentioned of warm season and then you can make a better decision on that. So this behind me is predominantly fine fescue which is a cool season grass. Now some people have also asked me recently can I grow this down in the south and I don't really have a great answer to that because I know that it doesn't love heat all that much and specifically in hot and very humid conditions. I'm not sure if you'd have a lot of great luck with that. We do have very humid and hot conditions here in the summer but it's only for a couple months. If you had that for more than three four months I'm really not sure how it would look so if someone has done some testing down there and wants to leave a comment down below about fine fescue in some of the warmer climates then definitely you could let us know but I don't think I would necessarily recommend it compared to some of your warm season grasses just remember that warm season grasses cool season grasses there are differences there are specific reasons why they are grown in certain areas so keep that in mind so let's talk about how I transformed this area down here so this was a flatter spot on our property that the first time that we visited I noticed it just looked like a great spot to come down here get out of the sun in the summer and have a more of a camping situation possible with a little fire pit and all that stuff so that was really the vision for me but it was in terrible shape there was so much brush here there's a couple of trees that were sitting out in the middle that I knew I wanted to clean out so that it, it had a very clean open look to it basically just started with brush removal of a bunch of things I did a lot of this by hand I didn't really have equipment at the time so I used a brush cutter attachment on one of my weed eaters and just came down here and started going to town. Then there was a lot of thorny stuff. We have a lot of thorny stuff on our property. So we had to remove as much of that as possible. Then I had a friend also run some equipment over here, take out just a couple of small trees so we were left with a nice open area. From there, I did one application of a weed and grass killer. So that was to remove all the vegetation that was here as much as possible. It was kind of in a time of the year though when I don't think things were extremely thriving. So I wasn't sure how good that application was going to do. And most of the time you do more than one application in, of this type of product and I only had time to do one so I wasn't sure how it was going to work out but in the end actually worked out really well. So I did that, I waited a couple weeks, then I came down here and I started to work on leveling the soil and making sure that everything was as smooth as possible. So this is again in a renovation process, something that I highly recommend if you have the time to go ahead and do some smoothing and leveling work before you're going to put that seed down just because you have the opportunity. You're never going to have another opportunity to do quite that same process again very easily. So think about that and plan for that if you really can do that. If you don't have access to some of the equipment that I'm using here, you could probably till up the area if your soil allowed it and do some a similar process or if you could find a rental machine that had like a Harley rake on the front of it. Something that is like a soil cultivator that you could smooth things out. Otherwise, you can also just resort sometimes to putting a harrow drag on, dragging the soil around, and if you can get some weight on there depending on your soil, you might have some luck with smoothing things out just with a drag. Then I proceeded to put down the seed, and that's what we'll talk about here in just a second, what type of seed to use and why it's important 
to pick the right grass type for a shady section. So put down that seed, I used a drag to just lightly rake it in, put down some starter fertilizer, and then from there, there was no irrigation down here except for waiting for rainfall, so I had some spotty rain that fall. We did not get very consistent rain, but the one thing about a shady section is that, especially in the fall time, as the sun is getting less and less intense, if you do get some rainfall, it tends to hold on a little longer in some of these areas and help you to get that seed to germinate. It wasn't looking fantastic by the end of the fall by any means, but it was starting to grow in enough that I could get a sense of where I was at do I need to add more seed or not? So I let it go through the winter. Looked pretty tough in the next spring just because we get a lot of deer traffic down in this section. And especially during winter, it can really tear up a lot of turf. But the next spring, I started to notice a real nice early green up down here. I did get one application of fertilizer down to jumpstart things just because it hadn't had a lot of fertilizer to get it going. Then I started to notice things thriving. I started to get a sense of what it was going to look like down here. We did a project to put in our fire pit and have been using this area down here. Uh, not as much as we would like to, but just when time allows to come down, have outdoor movies, have a fire with friends and sit around the fire and all that. So that's really the short story of how this all went. It wasn't an extremely difficult process by any means, but choosing the right grass seed was important for me to have success in transforming this area. Now there's different types of fine fescues, but in general these are going to do best in shadier sections. The reason that a lot of people don't use them or don't really necessarily want them mixed in with a bluegrass or something else in their yard is that they have a very fine texture. They don't look exactly the same. And if you're someone that likes to mow your lawn taller, a lot of times it gets very wispy. It's hard for it to stand up and match the rest of your yard. So that is the reason why a lot of people don't use them, but if you have a section like this, where you know it's going to be mostly shady most of the time, then planting just fine fescue, maybe a small amount of something else to go along with it, is going to be great because you don't have those issues of trying to match it with something else in your yard. Also, that allows you to keep it cut a little lower, doesn't fall over and look so wispy if you're trying to cut it higher. So this I cut at about two inches or so. I'm finding that it does pretty well there, haven't really seen any issues with that. And also because I'm not in intense sun, it doesn't really have many issues with that lower cut compared to this is out in full sun, it definitely would get brown pretty fast. One other thing to think about with it is that I wouldn't call it extremely traffic tolerant. So although I do have a lot of deer traffic down here, I will see some damage that they do to it. And if that means that you have to do a light overseed from time to time, that may be what you have to do. I haven't really done any overseeding, but I am noticing that the traffic is starting to take a toll down here in some spots. And it's looking a little bit on the thin side, but we are at the worst time of year right now in terms of the hottest and the most humid for this grass type. So it's limping along. Once we get into fall and I get more fertilizer on it, it usually really starts to wake up again and look a lot better. But keep that in mind. If it's gonna be something where you have tons of traffic on it constantly, it may May not be the best option. Let's talk about one other option for shadier areas. The next best option probably for shade would be tall fescue. I've actually found that certain cultivars of bluegrass and certain cultivars of ryegrass can do pretty well in some shade too. But those grasses are typically more of a full sun. Tall fescue can obviously do well in full sun too, but it does have some shade tolerant properties. So this area behind me is a spot that I seeded tall fescue last fall. It's something that doesn't really get anything more than some filtered light throughout the day. This is a scenario where I would recommend that if you want Something uniform throughout your yard. If you have some full sun areas, you have some areas that maybe are a little bit shadier, but they do get some filtered light to them, this would definitely be a good option to keep everything consistent. Now you might have some sections, especially like this, that get shade during the summertime that look a lot better and a lot greener than some of those full sun sections if you're not irrigating everything the same, just because of that sun intensity and how it takes a toll on everything. But it would still be a consistent grass type instead of having to choose a couple different grass types that don't necessarily 100% match if you have some different sunny and shady conditions. This section right here is where I'm testing perennial ryegrass on this half, Kentucky bluegrass on that half, and the densest shade spot that I could find. I would say that at this point, these grasses are doing fairly well in these conditions, but I'm doing more of a long-term test with this. So this was planted last fall. This is the first summer that it has gone through in these conditions. So I wanna give it a little more time to see how that shade affects it and how it's gonna actually look long-term with does it thin out or what does it end up looking like as far as ground cover there? Now, there's a couple nice things to think about with shady conditions and that would be that 
irrigation goes a lot farther on these if you happen to have irrigation you don't need as much in these shadier sections or when you do get rainfall they don't dry out as fast the other thing would be you don't have nearly the type of weed pressure in terms of annual weeds like crabgrass and things like that in really shady sections they will completely take over a full sun area it seems like in a matter of days sometimes but shadier sections at least they don't have as easy of a time in the shady sections which is nice too so there are some benefits to shade and having shade but there are also some areas that I'll show you right now where maybe grass just doesn't belong in an extreme shade situation and those are some things to think about too. So this specific spot right here is one that I might consider long term to extend a bed or a landscape bed or something out into this spot because I have a very difficult time getting consistent grass to grow. So this is a large canopy here right now we're at about 11:30 a.m. and so we're getting to the midday sun and you can see not much light coming through here whatsoever and also it's an area where the deer tend to come around and follow this path here and so it gets a lot of foot traffic through here too and what i've noticed is that no matter how much seed i put down i can't seem to get a lot of good growth to come in so sometimes there's areas like this and i don't have a problem whatsoever telling you not every section of your yard needs to be covered in lawn there are other some shade tolerant landscapes and things that might work better in a section like this where you're not fighting against trying to grow grass in it all of the time. You do have some areas that seem to just thin, you're using fine fescues, you're using the right grass seed, and you just can't seem to get it to consistently grow in there. Maybe think about some other options as far as shade tolerant landscapes, and you might just have a lot better luck. The grass seed that I use down here in this section that's predominantly fine fescue is available on my website if you are looking for something like that. And of course, we also have the tall fescues available as well. I hope that gave you some ideas today on what to do in shady situations and a look at how I transformed this area as well. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.